Gregor Gregerson, he's the founder of Silver Bullion, and still with us is Vasu Menon from OCBC Bank. Gregor, welcome into the conversation. Uh, first, can I begin by asking you, how sustainable do you think some of the price increases that we've seen in nickel and cobalt actually are? Because I would contend there's a lot of hype in the EV space right now. Well, uh, so there might be some truth to say about cobalt, um, because it's gone up already three times, it's coming down now, it's sort of stabilizing. Um, cobalt is all about the supply, story. Uh, also, cobalt is coming from the Congo. If you have a disruption there, we can see much higher prices. Uh, but nickel, I believe, has just started. As a matter of fact, it's at 25% of its 2007 high. So it's really very cheap. Uh, from production cost, um, oftentimes the class one, the type you need for batteries, is actually cheaper than so most facilities can produce it. So I think you have very little downside and you have a lot of upside potential. Uh, especially in regards to the EV story you just alluded. Mm. But any reason why nickel has not done as well as, you know, cobalt, for example? I mean, the market is aware of the EV story, and, uh, you know, clearly cobalt has benefited in terms of price appreciation, but nickel has not benefited as much, especially class one nickel. I mean, what's your take on why, you know, it's lagging? Most people don't know about it. So uh, when you buy something for lithium iron, you would go with lithium first. And lithium has gone up 400%. Um, then cobalt is the next story. Uh, nickel is something that most people are not aware of, and I believe that will be the next big story, really, because batteries, uh, what, what holds the charge in modern chemistries for batteries is nickel, not cobalt. You need cobalt to prevent the battery from exploding. So the more nickel you can put into a battery, the cheaper the battery becomes, the more powerful the battery, and the more range you get in your cars. So the whole industry is trying to go go to a new battery standard where 80% is nickel. Right now we're around 50% of the cartload being nickel. Okay, so there'll be an increasing demand for nickel, you can assume, in the future. What's the best way for investors to get a price exposure to this? If you are looking to move into that EV space, do you buy the physical metal or do you buy stocks exposed to those assets? I would say it has three ways of doing so. Um, the first point would be to buy future contracts it's the problem with future contracts, it's in what's called contango, meaning if you hold a position, eventually you have to switch contract into a higher priced one, so it gets very expensive to, to keep a position long term. Um, we, I was talking about this with a trader and he was telling me the problems he had in, in uh, getting a long position and that's really where the idea came about to take delivery of physical two-ton bags of class one nickel. Uh, store it, insure it, make sure it's a real thing and provide liquidity for it, uh, which provides a much cheaper way of actually buying the real metal. Uh, now, the other option, there are no real ETFs out there uh, on ETFs, on nickel, because it's not really a, uh, something that's uh, widely available in the market. You can buy a miner. It's the problem with a miner is uh, when manufacturers such as Volkswagen, when they, they just locked in $25 billion worth of nickel and cobalt, um, when they do that, they're all off-take contracts, meaning it might be production within the next 10 years. And unless you know for sure what you're buying, that miner might have sold future production, so you might not be participating in the upside of nickel. Mm. So oftentimes the simplest thing is buy the real thing mm. and uh, sell it whenever you want. Mm. How much upside do you see for, for nickel from, from here, given your prognosis about demand and the EV? Uh, well, I don't see any reason why nickel shouldn't be going back to a 2007 high, which was 54,000 per ton. Right now we're talking around 13,500 or so, so a 400, 500 percent uh, increase I think is realistic in the next five to six years, especially considering that the demand for EVs is likely to explode in around f three to four years from now, because that's when we're going to hit parity with the price of equivalent ICE car, meaning combustion engine, and electric vehicle car will be about the same. All right, it's interesting. We're out of time, gentlemen. We'll have to leave it there. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us today, Gregor. We appreciate it.